First of all, I just would like to say that I'm not yet astronaut. I'm engineer, and I will remain engineer, and my speech will be in English. I was wondering what I will say exactly, and I honestly didn't prepare a speech, so I will just try to speak and just talk about my personal experience. We all, or most of us, dreamt to become astronauts. I obviously saw the answer, and at least we were staring at the stars, wondering what's beyond Earth. And sometimes we found answers that we explained with science, and sometimes we just kept staring at the stars and dreaming. A few years later, when we grew up, we understood that this is just a dream. We don't have maybe the capacities, we don't have enough conditions. We decided to do realistic jobs. Engineers, lawyers, artists, doctors. Fantastic jobs that are just, just solving issues and just trying to make the challenges easier for us to survive. And we forgot about the dream to become the astronaut, of course. In 1962, USA invested around $135 billion, billion dollars, a huge amount of money spent on a mission for the moon. A mission that most of them, most of people on Earth, considered this as craziness because we had so many issues in Earth. We have lots of people starving, lots of wars, lots of issues that we even cannot even solve yet. Kennedy made a speech, a very eloquent and great speech by Kennedy himself, and he said that we go to the moon, it's not because it's a very easy task, but it's a very challenging one, and we are challenging our capacities, human and technological capacities. It was a great one and inspiring, and many people started dreaming about space. But not everyone was satisfied because, again, they considered this as a loss of money and that we have just invested in other things more realistic for security, for food, for people dying every day. And we kept this again as a dream. But of course, all of us were just watching the mission on the moon and watching also if we can really survive on another planet. Of course, um, we don't talk about the moon because it's a satellite. I will start with my own experience, so why I decided to go to space. So we don't talk about money, I don't care a lot about the billion dollars spent, to be honest, so I just care about my own money. Why I decided to go to space? I basically didn't know what I wanted to become when I was very young. I wanted to become like what my parents wanted me to become, maybe a doctor or maybe I liked art a lot, but I, I don't know if I was really a good one. I was just a ballerina and, you know, it's, it's a quite um, a different um, career that I was really thinking about to become a, a first ballerina. You know, it was like a dream of a little girl. And then I had, I always mentioned that I had an uncle that was working in NASA, the first Tunisian uh, engineer in NASA that he retired and he was always inspiring us. I was just watching without understanding of course and I was wondering and dreaming about space and what I was seeing, I didn't, to be honest, I was not watching a lot of stars and planets because we can just look up and we can see this. I was watching the books of the instruments, the satellites, things that will make us closer to space and that was the thing that triggered me to be honest. Of course, I kept my career of ballerina. I made like, so far, I made like 23 years of ballet. True, I, I gained a little bit of weight, but it's, uh, I kept staying ballerina. But I also decided to do engineering. I did engineering for the only purpose to do engineering for space. But in Tunisia, we didn't have space. We didn't have enough investments for space, and which is very understood. We, we cannot really push everyone to do something that is beyond their capacities. So I did engineering, I decided to make um, the National Institute of Applied Science in Tunis, in SAT. It was a great university, but at a certain point I could not really study. I was retained by um, an illness, but of course we will not go into details, but it was quite a challenging one that kept you having headaches, migraines, uh, loss of appetite, like maybe the doctors will, <laughs> will be able to understand this. And um, it was quite 
difficult for me even to study and I could not really succeed my first years very well, as I wanted, of course. And then I, I, I treated it a little bit and then it came back again stronger. So I spent years making therapies almost every day before studies and before work, every single day. Spent hours just waiting for doctors and hours, you know, in, in France and Germany. So Germans are very good with times, but sometimes you wait for four to six hours. And then um, I was watching around who was around to help you, who was around to make you up. And because of their own challenges, not everyone was available. So I had a choice, either I'd stay stuck in the ground with pain and with uh, complaining why life is doing this to me, I decided to look up to space. And each one of you will have this capacity to look up, of course. But you will notice that there is a huge amount of energy, of power, of strength that will make you up. And after this illness, so that I cured, of course, there was other big events in my life, like the loss of my father. That was a few months ago. And that was like, um, and, and, and he was very close, so it was like a, a, a trauma, to be honest. But what saved me was space. What saved me was that power that I take from stars, from launchers, the energy I took it from it. This is just one experience, my own, but I am sure that there is a lot of others, amazing, outstanding engineers out there that can talk about their own experience. The thing that was really triggering me was really I was trying to understand why we put all that money in space, why we put all that money on space exploration, why we put all that money on things that we, we don't have any, uh, we will not use, basically. Then I was really, really amazed by the fact that space is not only uh, a tool to look outside, but it's a tool to look inside of Earth. You are probably not aware, but if we don't have space products, satellites, for a few days, all the, space, the Earth activities will be blocked. You use your mobile phones. I see all of you have mobile phones. You communicate with mobile phones. You use um, GPS to come to here. You use um, lots of ways of communication, and that's all satellite data. So you use satellite data and you use satellite services and products every single day. And you cannot even spend one single day without it. But okay, if you can stay a little bit away from the nature, but even with that, you need space satellites. Many countries started understanding this point and started understanding how they can use space satellites. They started understanding that space satellites can really solve major issues, not only in, in, the, in really uh, ex like very wealthy countries, but also in other countries like in Africa, Middle East, in Tunisia. We have, how to say, inevitable, let's say, um, catastrophes that happens every day, like earthquakes, um, floods, and we cannot manage it, or we could not manage it. So now we are, have specific satellites, Earth observation satellites, that are used for this purpose. We use Earth observation satellites to control, to watch, to even try to prevent this kind of catastrophes, and this is a, a topic that we are still studying. So we don't watch to the stars, but we use satellites and space technology to look inside Earth. And you have no idea how much thing we still didn't discover yet. Thanks to space products, satellites. And more we do technology, um, as I told you, I'm an engineer, so I, I, I will always remain an engineer. More we discover technologies, more we have more sophisticated sensors and tools that will allow us to know more and discover more what we have inside. I was talking with my sister, who is an architect and archaeologist as well, and she was giving me her insights about how space satellites are is discovering new sites in Tunisia that we didn't know about before. I was talking with my sister, who is a lawyer, and she was giving me also ideas how space can really make countries together, how we can create things that are a common space, because space at the end is something for all of us, it's not only for people that reach the moon, but also for people that 
need to escape and to take some power. The second thing that was triggering me as well, though I think that you all know that we, we don't have dinosaurs anymore on Earth, so it's 66 million years ago. So and there is a reason behind that there was an asteroid coming to kill all of them. A few years ago, we started a mission called AIM mission. It's a mission between NASA and ESA. NASA, you all know NASA, ESA is European Space Agency. So it has two spacecrafts. The first one is called DART, that has been launched last year. It will start making the first exercise of planetary defense. In other words, it's not science fiction anymore. It's not in films, it's not in series. It's not something that we will watch in cinema, but it's something that we might live one day. So now we will try to see if we really have the technology to defend ourselves if there is an asteroid coming so that we don't all die. So thanks to space and thanks to space technology, we have the capacity to survive. Then I start also understanding the fact that while we want to go to the moon, I myself would like to go to the moon. I, I, it's not because I don't like Earth, but it's, like, it's more interesting to discover something new. So it's also, another reason is that humans, we are all, um, by nature, explorers. We like checking what's beyond existing, existing images, if I may use the word. We try to see what's beyond the stars, what's beyond the planets. We try to understand if there is other species living, maybe it's quite exciting to understand that there are other species watching us. So we kept waking up every day as aerospace engineer to make a satellite or to make a telescope just to watch if there is any capacity of life outside of Earth to escape from Earth or if there is anybody else watching us, which is really exciting. So that's why we make telescopes. So telescopes have the capacity to watch galaxies, stars, planets. And with years, it becomes more sophisticated and more useful. So you can watch how planets are, are organized. You can watch how outside is so organized and so beautiful. You can watch how Earth has been created, probably. You can watch all what's beyond Earth, and you can understand that at the end, with all our problems we have, with all the disasters, all the wars we have, it's, we are just a, a tiny thing in this world. We're not even existing compared to the big galaxies. And then at that point, you will understand that all the problems you have, all the illnesses and losses of people you love is, I won't say tiny, but it's, a, it's, it's really not, nothing compared to what's happening outside. So you will keep that power to continue working and to continue doing things that are amazing and to do things for humans. We all wake up every day. We sometimes don't know why we are waking up. We are doing daily things like we, we eat, we, we, we buy cars and houses and make families, which is also very good, but we don't know why, why we are doing this job, why we are making this, why we are waking up every day. What's the purpose behind it? If at the end of the day, you at 60 years old, you just retire and stay in, just in your house or travel, and that's, I'm sorry, but it's a nonsense for me. Instead, instead, you can have a purpose. You can have a goal that is beyond your own so. capacities, your, be your own needs. You can work on making life in Earth better. You can work on make this kind of catastrophes less impactful on Earth. You can defend people that have no technology to defend themselves by making for example, the Copernicus program that is just trying to avoid the disasters and to manage disasters, that is for everyone. You can make satellites. And by the way, satellites is not the big, costly, huge thing anymore, like 30 years ago. Now it's just a, a very small box that doesn't cost a lot, that we can, let's say, most of governments can invest in and can afford. And we are very happy to have this in Tunisia for the first time. We have the first satellite, we're very proud of it. And this, you can really start to understand that it's, everything changed. It doesn't require all that strict technology, it's still strict, but it's now more open, it's more democratized. And everybody can participate, so we have more actors. We don't have only NASA and ESA, but you have so many agencies around the world, you have private sector, 
you have startups, you have organizations. Even in Tunisia, we have very good ones. So you will understand at the end, but it's not only something far away, it's close, it's, be, it's with us. And also, I'd like to add one point, is that space is not for astrophysicists, only for astrophysicists and engineers. Space is also for artists and lawyers and doctors and financials and entrepreneurs and it's for all of us. So, in my opinion, we are beginning a new era of space and we are beginning something that is going to not only be in USA, in Russia and these big countries that can afford space, but it's something that we have and we can have. And we can start with just a small CubeSat in universities. It's not really that costly. It's just a few thousands of dollars, but it's not really costly compared to, to others. But we can start. We can also start talk, th thinking maybe about some treaties we can create for our own countries, for all of us, for our regions. When I see African countries and African students, how they try their best with nothing to create a space program, how students trying to support their own governments to make it, with nothing, you see the big potential that we have. We should not just stay watching the stars and dreaming about going to Mars and Moon, which is also amazing, but we can also create this for us, for ourselves, to solve our own issues. There is not much time left, but I just would like to say that, to be honest, um, space is not just a field, it's, uh, it's life, it's a future. And going to Mars and Moon, it's not a dream. There is lots of resources in there and outside of there. And to be honest, humans are not good with managing resources. We destroy everything. But there is hope that we can maybe take more resources and we can use more resources outside of Earth that we hope we don't really lose them again. But it is still a responsibility and we have to tackle it very well. We have to, we have, we have to use history to, to not repeat the same mistakes again and to understand that space is for all of us with all our differences, all our past, our careers, our dreams, our craziness, our issues. Because issues really give us the capacity to jump and to look up. Thank you.